I was trying to avoid this one, but then a couple people implied that they thought I couldn't do it. Well, here we are. Oh, hey, you caught me in my creative process. While I have you, you need to have this book. The reason why, I've begun writing my second book. Yes, already. We stay going, and you're gonna need this before that. Nine times New York Times best-selling, most pre-ordered book in the history of my publisher's company, thanks to you. Listen carefully, please. This book needs your reviews on Amazon. The link's in the description, please. It does a lot for the book. It would mean a lot to me, and it really helps the book. You've done so much for it already, so if you have a book, please do leave a review. Back to the pizza rolls. So today we are making the Totino's pizza rolls. God, it feels disgusting to say that. Look, I know that this is a childhood favorite, so I'm not just gonna bash it for the sake of bashing it. I've always had a passionate distaste for Totino's pizza rolls. Even as a child, you can ask my mom. She tried buying me Totino's pizza rolls and I was like, mom, love ya, what the f is this dog? I cannot do this. I thought about it for a little bit and I'm like, what exactly is the crust? We're gonna give our best shot at a true crispy exterior with that cheese pull inside, which I know we'll get. So with that being said, let's make this, shall we? Yeah, Walmart, the land of good prices and disparity. And we're picking up Totini Peeny Minis. I'm sorry, I can't drink, I farted. <laughs> I like how they just left these here. Good. I really don't want to go in, but we're going to anyway. Here we are, in the aisle, next to the burritos. Despicable. Wait, wasn't it green? Oh, here we go. All right, well, I hate this. I'm going home, thank God. That's it. So we got the bag. <laughs> All right, kids, dinner is served. I imagine as a parent, this is probably a lifesaver. I wanna point out this cube of cheese that has emerged. I like how it retained its shape. How is that even possible? This has been in a 425 degree oven for 15 minutes and the cube of cheese is still Cube. I'm afraid to eat these because I've heard the stories. This has an internal temperature of 205 degrees. Mm. Bon appetit. You know, there are certain foods that are just four or five year olds. It doesn't necessarily taste bad, but like none of the flavors make any sense. Somehow this tastes nothing like pizza. I don't know what the hell the cheese is. This is a little crispy pillow of something, but we're gonna make it a pillow of flavor. Turns out the elements to a pizza roll are simple. Dough, sauce, cheese, and fine diced peppies. You know, I scratched my head for a while trying to figure out what the hell was wrapping your beloved Totino's. And it seems to be fried as you can see from the blistery crust. What else blisters and fries kind of like this? Maybe sort of a wonton dough, or at least something similar. To make that, you'll need 125 grams of all-purpose flour, 20 grams of tapioca starch. Yes, these are very specific measurements. And three grams of fine sea salt. Whisk together until combined, and then add in 70 grams of very hot water. Mix until you get a shaggy dough and carefully knead until smooth, about five minutes. Yes, it will be hot, so if you don't have asbestos hands thanks to the restaurant industry, then I'd recommend using heat-proof plastic gloves. Cover that with plastic wrap, give it a wholesome personality, and let it rest for 30 minutes. Now, while that's resting, let's get all of our stuff for our filling. For your tomato sauce, get a medium saucepan and add six ounces or 170 grams of pancetta, cut into quarter-inch strips, a light glug of extra virgin olive oil, set that on the stove over medium heat, and cook for five minutes, stirring often or until it's released its fat and it's brown and crisp. Then add four cloves of garlic, thinly sliced, two red Fresno chilies, finely diced, and saute just until fragrant, about one minute. Then add a 28 ounce or 795 gram can of crushed San Marzano tomatoes, a little splash of water that's been tossed around in your now empty can, three sprigs of fresh thyme, season lightly with salt, and a small pinch of sugar. That just helps kind of curb the acidity, but it's not a requirement. Bring up to a simmer over medium heat, reduce the heat to low, and let that cook and reduce for eight minutes, stirring occasionally. Once done, season it to taste with salt and pepper. Not only is that the hardest thing you're gonna need to make for the filling, but it's it's also a lovely tomato sauce, worthy of coating a nice pasta or being spread on a beautiful pizza dough, because you probably won't use all of it. For the rest of the filling, get yourself half a pound or 227 grams of a whole pepperoni, uh, well, a mini pepperoni, that is. You can find this at a lot of stores. Dice that into quarter inch cubes and keep the cubes even as best you can. And well, that's kind of it for that part, unless you make your own pepperoni, which is coming, trust me. Now, the cheese mixture is just as important here. It's all about ratios to make the flavor special. So combine one cup or 60 grams of grated Monterey Jack cheese, one cup or 60 grams of grated low moisture mozzarella, and half a cup or 30 grams of grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Please 
I am begging you, grate your cheese fresh, unless you really prefer sawdust or a bunch of starch to ruin the meltability and flavor slash texture. Okay, your filling components are done. Now's the time to finish your dough. So take it out of your plaster wrap, cut it into four equal pieces, roll each piece on a pasta roller until you get a sheet about an eighth of an inch thick, cut it into two and a half inch by two and a half inch squares, and you're ready to fill them. Now making your own dough here comes with a much better texture, but if you're strapped for time, I get it, you can use your pre-made square one time wrappers. Now keep those covered and heavily dusted with cornstarch so they don't stick or dry out to assemble. Get a little square, start with half a teaspoon of cheese in the center, followed by a scant teaspoon of your sauce. It's gonna be real nice. Get a little couple pieces of that benchetta. A few tiny cubes of pepperoni, and finally, another half teaspoon of cheese. It's better to slightly underfill these at first, rather than overfill them and be very, very, very sad. Now lightly dampen the perimeter of your dough with water, fold one edge over the filling, then fold the opposite edge over that to form this sort of tube. Fold the bottom corner up and over, making sure to seal the edges all around it, and last, fold the top down to seal your letter of flavor. And when I say seal, I mean every single crevice shut, okay? If you don't, then when you fry these, all of your filling will out one end. Now repeat that process until you use all your filling or you use all your dough and you have a true little pizza roll. Now, it's very easy to cook these. Get a five quart pot filled with two and a half quarts of vegetable oil heated to 375 Fahrenheit and fry these in two to three batches for around two to three minutes each or until you get a nice light golden brown puffed evenly and the inside is hot. Carefully remove with a spider and drain on a wire rack. And then repeat with all of your pizza rolls. That blistered golden puffed crust, basking in its glory. But what about the inside? A gentle tear to reveal a cheese pull about three times the size of the actual pocket that contains it. That is what I call a proper pizza roll, something truly mightier than its size. So let's taste test this and see if size matters. And also uh, if we beat the coveted Totinos. Well, here we are again. I've picked a random one and look, yet another cube of cheese emerging. They talk about being crunchy. You make this for your lover, for your ancestors. It's astronomically better in every single regard. You can taste the layers of cheese. You can feel the texture of that melty cheese oozing. But more specifically, it is full of classic flavors that are truly reminiscent of pizza. Is this a win? Not until we have our deciding factor, Mr. Totino Simp himself, Pano. There he is. Now tell me your love for Totino's. Totino's is the best thing ever made. Totino, if you're out there, I love you. Open your mouth nice and wide. He's processing. Why are your pants all wet? Number two. Number one was better. You just knew. I knew. I'm sorry, Totino, I don't mean it, but Papa killed it. So that actually tastes like pizza. It's like a mini calzone, whereas this just kind of tastes like a Totino's pizza roll. And you also got the crunch, even though they've been cooling down for a bit, there's still that crunch. You did so good, thank you, buddy. Yeah. We knew we would win this, and I know that it takes a lot longer. Do I expect anyone to make this? No, but if you want a superior eating experience, this will actually bring that to you. You've never eaten this before. This will change the way you look at a pizza roll, because this is what a pizza roll should have always been. You wanna know what else has a molten inside of 475,000 degrees? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our Totino's pizza rolls. Should a pizza roll exist? I don't think it really needs to, but I also at the same time see the convenience aspect. You want a snack, you put it in the oven and it's done, right? But there's so many other things that also do that. I also understand that these are an unrealistic thing to make. So again, you're making these for an experience, whatever it is that you're having a little snack event with. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.